St. Louis Post Dispatch columnist, contributor to the Big Five Fifty KTRS. Good morning, Tony. Good morning, McGraw. How are you doing today? We're great. Thanks for uh, checking in. Eric Greitens uh, met with um, the citizenry on Facebook yesterday. Uh, first time he's, I guess, he's sat and taken questions from anybody. Uh, what are your thoughts well, as our governor gets off on the on Facebook? Well, he's, done that, he's done that twice now. And, you know, I mean, on one hand, I get it. Uh, governors and politicians these days have found technology to use technology to their advantage to go around the public now uh, to go around the media. It's, it's important to note that when he's answering questions from Facebook, they're pre-screened. He's not just taking them as they come. I mean, this is a very controlled process. This governor likes control above all else. And so he doesn't like a situation where somebody like me or somebody might, like you might ask him a question that he's not prepared for. So he'll go on friendly programs where he knows that they're only going to ask him softballs. He'll go on, you know, Facebook where he can control the process. And until the media uh, uh, and, and the public demand more of the governor, he's going to continue to do this. What I find interesting is he keeps saying that Obamacare and the Affordable Care Act is dis destroying Missouri and the insurance markets. They've never, the Affordable Care Act has never come to a Missouri we rejected the, uh, the federal funds. It has zero impact, virtually, on what's going on in the state of uh, Missouri, yet he keeps saying that it's a dangerous game they're playing. Well, this is what the Republicans did, and it was masterful until they were completely in charge and had to fix the, the real problem, is when the Affordable Care Act became law, it was contingent for it to work properly on the state's expanding Medicaid. In the original version of the law, that Medicaid expansion was automatic. It was the one gift that the Supreme Court gave Republicans when they upheld the Affordable Care Act. They said states get to choose whether or not they expand. And if you look at the market across the country, the states that are doing well economically, the states that have lower health care costs, are the ones that expanded Medicaid because it means Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, is working the way it's intended. And what is just truly uh, hilarious, if it wasn't so serious, is that the Republicans are now stuck with what they've created. In states like Missouri, where they haven't expanded Medicaid, they're stuck with Governor Greitens saying, Obamacare is bad, but you know what? Trump care is really bad, too, and I don't know what I'm going to do. The fact is, Governor Greitens, in his heart of hearts, wants to expand Medicaid because he knows that's good for the economy of the state. It solves all kinds of problems for him, but politically he can't do it. What's interesting is you're seeing Republicans, Laura Ingram, uh, Tom Cotton, Rand Paul, the governor of Kentucky, some uh, senators from Ohio, all saying exactly that. Don't take away our expansion money. That's really working in our state. Well, that's the problem. The whole repeal and replace Obamacare thing was a political lie from the beginning. But now they're stuck with it, and they look at the polls. Even yesterday I saw a Fox News poll. Let's, 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 let me repeat that. A Fox News poll said that 67% of Americans think Trump care takes away too much of Obamacare. That's how bad things are for the Republicans right now. So what they're doing is they're trying to decide who do we blame? Do we blame Donald Trump, who's likely to be impeached, or do we blame Paul Ryan, who's likely to soon be in the same place John Boehner was, where he can't pass a vote without Democratic help? The, the problem isn't Obamacare, although there are issues with it that could be fixed in which a serious legislature would just go about fixing those problems. The problem is the Republicans created a repeal and repeat and replace lie. They got themselves elected on the repeal and replace lie, and now they have to tell their voters, you know what, we can't do it, and even if we could, we don't want to. What's interesting about all of this, and I still don't think this gets enough attention, is that before, when it was just in theory, 
the Heritage Foundation. This was their conservative plan to combat Hillary care. And this was their conservative answer. And so the fact that Obama took the conservative ideas, implemented it, has driven Republicans crazy because now they can't come up with anything better because this was their plan originally. Not only was this the conservative idea, go back to the early days of the Affordable Care Act. The Missouri House, overwhelmingly, it wasn't even close, voted to expand Medicaid in Missouri as part of the Affordable Care Act because the math is what it is. The influx of federal money completely improves the Missouri economy. All of the math that politicians rely on for economic development, it's the same math. It's the same people doing the same programs about the influx of federal money. For, uh, for all of the incentives that they give to corporations, Medicaid expansion helps significantly more to the overall economic benefit of the state. And the Missouri House passed it. And the Missouri Senate was one vote away, and former state Senator Jane Cunningham of Chesterfield blocked it. And then all of a sudden the tide started to turn, and Republicans decided, oh, my gosh, we're against Medicaid expansion. This is how we're going to kill Obamacare. That was their plan. They knew if enough states didn't expand Medicaid, they could kill Obamacare because it doesn't work without the state expansion. But most states, including most Republican states, went ahead and did it anyway. And now those Republican governors and those Republican senators are saying, don't take away our Medicaid expansion. This is how we are helping our state. Never a dull moment around here, Tony Messenger. One quick note. Uh, you called out Steve Stanger in a column. He wasn't happy. He calls me. Next time, can you guys get together and sort of leave me out of it? Well, no, this is my favorite thing because I love it when he calls you and goes on the radio because anybody who reads the column, after they listen to Stinger, they're like, wait a minute, Tony wrote that. I listened to the interview, and Steve said that, that I never wrote that he said he canceled the Gershenson contract because of the budget. No, I did. I made it very clear that he says he canceled it because of the budget. You know why? Because it's a really silly response. If you look at what actually happened, I don't believe he canceled it because of the budget, but he said it, and it's in my column. And if you're getting ready to vote on Proposition P, you need to know that Steve Stinger, the county executive, says that the county is in a whole lot of budget hurt right now. So what are you really passing a tax increase for? That's what he said in that column. And when he comes on your show to deny that, that, that I reported it, all people have to do is go to stltoday.com, read what I wrote, and they know that what the truth is. Tony, always a pleasure here with us every Tuesday and Thursday. Have a good week, and we'll talk to you on Tuesday. Good to talk to you. All right, 827. Here.